All right, guys, can you all hear me now? Good old, uh, here we go. Now we go. Hey, you're welcome, Jay. Uh, did I get your answers uh, that you needed on those, uh, like good enough for what you needed? Yep, when you guys uh, type anything in the box, uh, make sure you have it as all panelists and attendees. Um, for whatever reason, sometimes other people can't see your questions on there. Um, I'm gonna start off with the, uh, Paul adds these on when we put them onto YouTube, but I'm gonna put them on here just so uh, the disclosure that trading is a dangerous activity. It can take all your money, it can make you a lot of money, blah, 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 blah. You can read through that, uh, screenshot that if you want. It says uh, trading is risky, trade at your own risk. We're not giving you advice. We're just uh, make indicators that help you make better decisions. And then it's up to you to make that decision on whether or not you trade or not. Okay, good, Jake. All right, guys, let's, um, I want to just tell y'all that this week, or in the last week since la uh, last Wednesday, I have helped four, maybe five people um, on Thinkorswim. All I got to say is my heart goes out to you guys on, it is such a complicated platform I don't know how y'all do it, to be honest with you. Like, I was so, I get so frustrated when I get done with it. Uh, yeah, Gary, Gary, you're one of them that, uh, if, if you don't mind me saying your name on there. It, uh, I helped somebody else out today for about an hour. And I did, uh, though, Gary, I did figure out how to make the channels by pure accident playing around in there. I did figure out a setting inside of there to make it where it works. If I got time towards, now nah, I won't be able to do it uh, tonight, but uh, send me a message. Let me see that. There's my email guys. Send me a message if you have think or swim. And um, I found the settings inside of there to make your channels that are, I mean, pretty damn close to the ones that I do on trading view, like within one tick, probably. Um, I just came across it by accident. So, all right, let's, um, let's frame this up for today. I was telling you guys, I didn't, I have not taken any trades the last two days. It has been, um, just crazy on the market, but let me draw channel on here. You guys know I just for our Wednesdays to keep it consistent. I do a white channel for the daily and I do a red channel for the 60 minute. And that's really and truthfully, it's only because I just, I did it on one of the videos and to keep it consistent. Cause a lot of people that follow me, they'll ask me about red or white channels. So I've just kept them consistent uh, on there. So we're going to draw one on the daily. And if you look, Hold down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. We haven't even been close to that center channel line. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 20, 30. So 30, even though we're 31, 30, about 32 trading days, which is six weeks, we've remained in this lower channel. We've wicked above it a couple times. Uh, and if you've read the, let's see here, where's my little, turn my camera on. And yes, I am fresh from the beach, uh, unwashed. I actually did something and sand fell off me <laughs> just a minute ago. Uh, but if you read this price action breakdown book by Dimitri Lemire, um, and that's where these channels come from. It's nothing, uh, proprietary or whatever, um, you can buy the book for 10 bucks. Um, but these wicks are indications on the higher time frames, daily, weekly, monthly, 240s, 
uh, even hourly, uh, of big banks and institutions pushing it back up into where they want it to go. Yeah, Jake, that, I'm going to tell you what, this book single-handedly changed my entire trading life. Um, I won't take a lot of trades that I would have taken before. And sorry if I keep looking up. I moved my monitors from me having my neck surgery, looking left and looking right all day and down. Uh, was really jacking with my neck. I was starting to get uh, a lot of pain um, in there. So I took the arms off of the mount that I have. I got one of those mounts. Originally, I had six 32-inch monitors. It was uh, too overwhelming. Um, I felt like I was in a den um, on it. So now I just have two 32s stacked on top of each other. And it keeps me uh, looking up it keeps my neck more elevated. So when I am away from my computer and I'm on my phone looking down, uh, I figure it kind of balances out the, uh, the muscles on it. But anyhow, we spent six weeks down on here. That book, uh, basically, we can look at, like these two red candles here, we can look and see big banks and institutions were like, hell no, we're going up. And, they, and we did, they pushed it up, kept on going. Now, where we're at in that, who knows? Now. Let me show you an interesting, um, I don't know if I, let's see, this is 2009. I think this point right here, 2009. We're going to draw a channel from, oh, hold on. We were, we're going to draw a channel from March of 2009. And now I dropped it there. Let's see. If you hover over it, it'll have the dot where you had it, and then I can move it to current candle. All right. Now I'm gonna zoom in and look where we are at. Amazingly, where did we stop today? Now we're right on it for the new candle, but look where look where we're at. we have actually opened above it now. That doesn't mean that it can't come back down in here and work its way back down. But this is another reason why I didn't want to mess with today. We, we are, if you look over on the daily gap from back in February 21st to the 24th, that gap, we're right in the middle of it. And we have jacked around in that all day long. And I'm like, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm just not taking it. Um, I mean, I think we're going to go up, uh, I think we'll fill this gap to 33.26.75 and more than likely probably go to 33.39. That's when I think we'll come back down. And think about this. This is since 2009. That's an 11-year channel that has been pretty much respected for, I mean, for 11 years other than one time here, and these were only one, this was, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks here in 2016. Then you only had one candle out, one candle back. Same day candle came back in. Couple days right there. This was the December one. I did really, really well on this. Uh, I will never forget this Christmas Eve. I did very, very well going short. And then on Christmas on the Globex when it opened, it uh, I made double what I made the day before. It was uh, a very good Christmas. Uh, but other, and then this is right before the market fell out. We came out of that channel, retested it, came back up, and then we went all the way down. And this is the farthest that we have dropped out of that channel. Uh, now, so th that's one reason um, why I'm being very cautious in my entries right now is I, I trade better on trending days. I am not a very good uh, inside day or range bound trader. Um, it, I, and I'm sure a lot of you probably are too. You just get, get your ass chopped up. Um, you know what I mean? You're right on one, wrong on another one. Right on one, wrong on two. You know, it's uh, just not worth it on it. So let's drop down to a one hour. There's that daily channel. That's within the one hour. Now, one thing you guys can do too, um, I like to just see where we're at. If you right click that channel underneath your settings, visibility, you pull it up here. 
you can make this show up on whatever chart you want. So I'm going to take this off. My daily chart is still on there, uh, but it's not going to show up on my hourly. That way I don't have all these lines all over the place. Um, I do this a lot for like my weekly chart. It's set to where it only shows up on the weekly. Daily, you know, only set up on the daily. Um, so let's take that off. Now, if I go back over to my daily, there's my channel. Go back to an hour and you don't end up with a bunch of junk on your screen and it makes it super nice. And then you could always go over here in your um, object tree. It's down here on the bottom right. Click this. You can go through and right click and name. You know what I mean? I can name this daily channel for today. Uh, whatever channel on this day. And save them in there. And what I've been playing around with with my normal workspace is saving my channels and uh, basically the things I made all my decisions on that day, I'm saving them in there underneath that date. And then later on, if we come back to that level again, typically we're going uh, to play around in those same channels. Um, you already have them on there. Uh, it's amazing. And how I came across that was I drew channels for one of these Wednesday events. I didn't look at that workspace for a week. And when I logged on to look at it, we had come back down, bounced off that channel, got in it, and then was in it for several days, the exact same channel from like a week before. So um, they're, they tend to be, we tend to come back. And just because we drive down the street once doesn't mean we don't drive down it again twice. So right now, if you look at this, this is an hourly chart. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 hours. We've been bouncing between 33.23 and basically 33.10. If you take that one wick, that's 09. That we're in like a 13, 14 point range. All that is is chop, 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 chop. I don't, I'm not even going to ask anybody in here who got chopped up on this uh, because I guarantee you, you did. There's no freaking way that you don't. Now, one way that you could, and let's do a red channel. We could just go from here to here. And then you could play the tops and bottoms of those. Now, you tell me, can you see the big banks and institutions pushing that back into the channel at all on these chops? I mean, this is an all out war right now going on between them. Uh, now, just a little bit ago, if you take off that channel, it looks like we're completely sideways that uh, on there. But if you turn it back on, you can actually see we're creeping up very, very slow. But you could look at this battle. You can, these big long wicks, pushing back into the channel are opportunities that you can take for a long going out of there. Now, uh, it's up to you. I Right now, me personally, I'm, I'm not interested. When you get this consolidation crap right here going on, I just, I'm out. I'm not a good trader in those situations. Now, what you can do is go down to 15 minute in there, and now you can find uh, better opportunities. Like, you're not going to hit a 50 point home run in this. It's a 13 point range. So, you know, I don't want to play in that range. Now you can, you can go down to a five minute. All right. And then turn on bits. And of course I started a new um, chart. Let me, uh, why don't you guys follow me on this and you can watch this again. Set this as your default. This is my own personal deal. I don't need to see yesterday's high, yesterday's close, mid, yesterday's low. I know the green is the high, the red is the low. Uh, whatever mauve or whatever color that is, is the mid and yesterday's close is the cyan. So I, I don't want those lines on there so big. So you can go in here. One, I don't want them so bright. So I, I take mine down to about a quarter and I make them thinner, okay? And then I go yesterday's low, down to a quarter, make it thinner. Yesterday's close, take it down to a quarter, 
about there, make it thinner. Mid-range, same way, quarter, thinner. Today's open, take it down and thinner. All right, and then labels, you uncheck this box and you'll notice that this big old box up here that says long at whatever, that's the bits uh, where it draws the entry, suggests the stop loss in your lines, that you can take that off and those go away. The, late, the lines still stay there, but you don't have all that crap on your screen, uh, taking up screen space. Okay, now you're not over yet. Click on that instead of save it, and don't hit reset settings because it'll undo everything you just did. Click save as default and then okay. And then from now on, every time you add roller coaster to, uh, or excuse me, bits to any of your stuff on here, it's gonna apply those defaults. So how, see how the screen is like so much easier to read. All right, so let's go back to 15 minutes in this hour chart with bits. All right, now, if you're looking at this and you're looking for an opportunity in here, you're going to look, darn it, let's open this up here. We're gonna look for, I guys, just so you know, I have an Apple Magic Mouse and for whatever reason, I need to mess with the settings on it. it I do something with it and it throws my chart to the left. So that's why it keeps doing that. You want to look for these big wicks coming back in here. If you notice, the cyan came down, crossed over when we crossed through the channel, and then came back. And when it crossed back over, this candle came down, tested the bottom of that channel, and came back up. Now, if you add on, our bias down here was green on that candle that so following our rules, we're in the channel. Even though it's a sideways day, we are barely slightly trending up. You're taking your better bets is taking the bottom or the tops of the channel that don't even jack with this in here. That that's, that's the most extreme chop in there. Uh, so cyan comes down. Now we just barely went through the yellow, like you're not gonna take a short on that because there's no reason to. And then it crossed back over. When it did, cyan crossed over the yellow, one reason to go long. The candle went above the purple point of control dots right there. I hover right over that and you can see the purple point of control out there. Two reasons to go long, okay? We also wicked out of the channel on the candle before, came down, retested it, and was going up. Three reasons to go long, okay? Now look down below here on that candle. I'm just gonna leave my mouse there. You can see the dotted line going across it. The uh, bias dot turned green. We had, you know, we've been green, 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 green. One indecision candle there, and that was the power down. Then it came back up. Green, 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 green forever, and then boom, boom, two candles down. Went up one, boom, 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 down below, three yellows, and then boom, we got our next buy stop. Four reasons to go long. All right, now oscillator did go down, okay? But if you look, we went up and down like this uh, in here and never saw any red, okay? So with this coming down, we didn't bottom out uh, and it wasn't even close to turning red that because it turned around and then started getting bigger and bigger. So you have five reasons to go long. This one, maybe you could put it out there on one side of a, uh, you know, maybe. Uh, we're, let's do that. Let's keep it four reasons, yes, one, maybe. We, we don't have any clear no's yet. Then if you look down below, your, um, I've been studying the stochastics on this, and the red line, when it crosses over and goes back up, that is typically a change, which if you look right there at that exact same spot, let me blow this up, it crossed over and then came back up. Right there, but it pivoted and went up. And then if you look at RSI, now the one thing with RSI, if you go back, uh, 
See, it really, truthfully, the, the last two days have not been good. We haven't had like good solid pivots, you know, like this one, this one right here. That's just a nice V. It goes boom, boom, straight out. And look at the move, you know what I mean? This one was 32.58 to where it topped off for at 32.80, you know what I mean? You got uh, 22 points in that one move, and then it kept on going. Then it went 32.95. The out of there, I mean, you're talking 40 freaking points uh, out of there, and that was a nice just boom, you know, and then it turns around and rips up. Well, look what we got right now going on right through here and this is on 15 minutes there's not a lot of um ripping action straight now this one right here did but it's only three candles and then it turns around and it's it's just going sideways it this just looks like crap you don't see a lot of straight up you know you're gonna have some pullbacks in there but it goes up and straight down you just got this junk right here um i don't like it that uh, and that's why I'm not trading right now. And that's why I put that on Twitter that of uh, why I wouldn't take it. And here's a bits uh, signal that actually just hit. Uh, I'm too much babbling and not taking it. Um, all right, cyan crossed over right here, came up over, retested the yellow right here. And bounced off but when it retested it what is that that's the center channel line and the candle before did a nice wick below and then we opened above that red line let's see what the volume looks like i mean we got uh some green bars out of there it's on the second target one two yeah almost hit the third and then roller coaster roller coaster and I just had a little one there. Let's go down to five minutes. See what we can pull out of here. That thing will probably rock it back in there. Unless there's some news that I don't know about right now that's going on. Uh, five minute. Had a couple moves in there. Uh, not, you know, monstrous. I mean, they had 33, 18, 23 to 21. So I'm you're only talking three points and it I don't know about you I want a move that is like this where I get a nice pivot in my RSI I get a scarcity turnover reds going smaller had a series of yellows or reds before and then green and then it rockets to the freaking moon those are what I'm looking for if I don't see those I just don't take the stupid trade because you don't have to trade. Uh, I think that's the hardest thing is um, we're all so used to working and we feel like we have to make money every single day. And it's like, no, and in all honesty, you only have to make money a couple times a month. You just gotta be, uh, you know what I mean? You gotta pick the right ones. You don't have to over trade. And if you're over trading, now you got to compensate for your losses, whatever your ratio is. I mean, are you 50% winning? Are you 60? Are you 70? Are you 80? Some, some weeks I can, I'll go back and look at my numbers and I might be 82% right. And then other weeks I may be 52% right. And everything was right. You know, it was just me. It, uh, like, and that's, uh, I think an important thing for you to recognize when you see this crap, right here when you wake up in the morning and i don't know what time is this this is 2 30 2 30 in the morning you wake up at seven o'clock 7 30 in the morning and you see this right here all we've done is gone sideways don't even think about getting in there you just well, i mean look at even this busting out here doesn't even get me excited about anything because it's like it ain't going anywhere uh actually let's go back to that daily channel where we at on that daily? Nope, still not there. That uh, on that center channel, and let's go farther out. I think we're close to. Let's go to that other channel.
I think, let's pull back over here. There we go. And then once you scroll back, you can click this button. We should be really freaking close. I know we were right above that line. Yeah, we're like right, right, right on there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we come out, touch that center channel line and pull back in and leave a nice wick poking out of there that's like this right here. Um, and who knows, you know what I mean? It could do a couple candles outside of there and then come back. Um, I don't know. I don't know on that one. But let's go back to five minutes looking for opportunities inside of that channel. I Basically, there are some in there. We can go down to even a two minute, but you're basically just scalping while you're there at that time. Uh, boy, that thing is really rocking it up. 33.19 and went to 27. It's one of the bigger moves of the of the day but there's opportunities in here of cyan crossing over up here if you look right here let me zoom in a little more cyan crossing over you have a wick i mean this is a two minute chart so i don't put as much weight to it but you have a a, a ton of wicks right here that we could not bust out of that channel went back down there tried it again to close outside of it and then wicked out again and came back. That is your entry at 33.21. Cyan crossed over here. So we had a wick outside the channel at the top of the channel going down. One reason to go short. Cyan crossed over the yellow, two reasons to go short. We're below the purple point of control dots, three reasons to go short. Then you drop down, it crossed over right here. If you can look, we went from green, green, green. Let me hover back over again to our first indecision as it came over. Four reasons to go short. Our oscillator came down and was smaller. I mean, the very next candle, it went to red. Five reasons to go short. Your stochastics actually crossed over a um, couple candle, four candles before, um, eight minutes before that. Six reasons to go short. And then here is your RSI, the candle as it switched over, RSI went straight down. So you have six reasons to go short there. Now, one thing I forgot, let's add on Elliott Wave real quick. And now we got all this junk on the screen. That's why, I'd, uh, Typically, people will have Elliott Wave on one screen and bias and roller coaster on another one. I like to just have bias and roller coaster on mine. But one of the other, uh, re all right, so we had six reasons to take this short. All right, the seventh reason would be, let me turn off roller coaster real quick. These red and blue lines right here are your 6-4 moving average as part of the Elliott Wave Suite. One of the other rules is you don't take a short until, and you can see it right here, curves around, until you're below that 6-4 moving average. So if you want a more conservative entry, that entry was right there is where that was. So there's seven, eight reasons to go short now. Out there. Now this was on a two-minute chart a fifth wave moved down, believe it or not. Um, it was three and four was all in one candle and they stopped, closed and opened on the center channel line, came back up and came back down. Now that 33.18.50 to 33.16.50, that's not enough air above or below where you're going. Uh, I, that's, you know, when I first started in trading, you know, yeah, I'd be happy to scalp, you know, eight ticks, 10 ticks and do that five, six times a day. And I thought I was a king. And then at the end of the day, you get your um, brokerage statement and, you know, you're like $90 in fees. Like what the hell? And it's like, then you realize that you cannot take six or eight ticks and make any money because they're going to take four ticks away from you. <laughs> And freaking fees, it seems like, out of there. 
Jade, uh, let's see, what do you say? What's confusing to me is the signal that pops bright yellow color, last long entry or last short entry. How do I take that in my reasons? Um, can you, can you point to, uh, can, tell me, yo, oh, I don't have it on my screen. Okay. Um, maybe, is it the roller coaster? Let me take off of Elliott Wave. Okay, you'll email it. Yeah, I'll get you an answer back on it. Um, that I, I would say, me personally, I leave off. Uh, I I look for roller coaster moves, and and that's why I go through this every week, and I do the same damn thing over and over, because people call me during the week or send me messages, and I do a Zoom with them, and they're not following these rules. Uh, Jade is working on a. a like a checklist and he did um, he's in a trading group and they um, said that they would uh, he would share that with me on um, a checklist of going through what I'm teaching you guys this every week uh, of kind of like a checklist I can share with you all so you can just go through and check off and if you don't get enough uh, yes it, it, Trevor I'll put it in there right now Right down. T. Lorento. The book was so good, I even bought Paul a copy and gave it to him back when we were in Houston. And that, uh, it's a super, super good book. But I would not trade anything that's going on right now uh, in here. Just take a vacation, man. I, I guarantee you, you're tired of staring at your screens get away, do like I did today, go to the beach and hang out. Now, I was on a bunch of Zooms today, so I, I didn't, I was still in front of my screen. I was watching, uh, but there just wasn't anything that was exciting to take it. So let's go, let's go to, uh, oh, this is a new, uh, a new item. If you notice up here, uh, TradingView just came out with these, I think today, if I remember right. Um, let's see, I'm in SIN, all right? Yes, I'm in SIN. So if I wanted to take this trade now, originally, if I wanted to take a trade right now, I would have to click this little arrow and none of these stay the way you want them. So I'd have to click market and then I had, you know, and then it's wherever it's at. So you're one, stop loss, we're going to do eight and then I got to do short and then you can do it. Well, you can see how long that freaking takes, which is not good. So we'll close this one out now. So if you're sitting there watching like this will move right here while we're sitting there talking and we're like, Oh crap, this looks like a move we need to take. You can just go over here and just hit buy. Now it's not going to have a stop loss on there. So the first thing that you do, if you just hover over the one, click it, click stop loss, and then put in whatever you want, 10, hit modify, and there's your stop loss. And then you can move it around however you want after that. Did I click long on there? I guess I did. Um, that is a new feature that is awesome. Now, if, if you don't want those on your screen, you can just right click your screen and hit settings. Um, I believe, let me see, I think for the under symbol trading. Show buy sell buttons. And you see them disappear up there on the left. Uh, I'm really glad they added them. It's, uh, it, it'll come in really handy for those quick trades where you're sitting there watching it and then you're like, the, the, you know, seven seconds it takes you to get over here to get something done, you know what I mean? It's moved three points and now you're 12 ticks, you know, in the negative on it. That, let's just close this. So let, let's pull a, what do you guys, uh, I mean, I can go down. All right, we got that on there. 
I can go in here and go through some more symbols, but what do you guys want to actually, like what questions do you have outside of my normal grading? And let me, let me see if I can answer some of that stuff for you guys. Y'all fall asleep on me? More examples, Jade? Okay. All right, I don't see I don't see anything from anybody else unless you're writing a novel and I haven't seen it yet. Um, we'll just go through all of these actually. We'll uh, let's just go over to YM. Same way with it. Go to your daily. And also when you do when I do this white channel. You just get that bottom of the pivot to there. When you right click that channel, you can go in here to the inputs and change it to whatever you want. High, low, closed. I have been messing around with high, low, closed divided by four. And if, if you watch that, it tightens up on a three just a little bit, but it opens up just I mean, like a millimeter on four. Uh, I've been playing around with some different deviations for the top and the bottom. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens on that. But visibility wise, this is where you would undo if you only want it to show up on the daily or weekly. And then style is where you change the color. And I just changed it to white. I think at default it's red or something. Um, so you just click that white, click off of it. You're up one, click white, bottom one, click white. Uh, and you want Pearson's R on there. I don't know exactly what it actually is. I just know everyone says Pearson's R is really good. And then you save as. And let me go back in here again, just so you can see it again. So you change the colors, blah, 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 go all the way down. Click template, save as, and then you can name it W5T Daily Channel White, whatever you want to name it. And then you can save it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, all right. So we have the Dow. I'm going to run through these because what time is it? We got 20 minutes left. Uh, let's go down to an hour. And we're going to look for. I, I don't like volume. I'm going to take this pivot from. Really, true play, I should take it from here to here because it's been such a tight range i don't want this is too much uh moving around uh and it's been tight as hell from here to here so we are going to keep this one and i'm going to go from the bottom of there to the top of there and you can see that it's been super super accurate on there now we drop down to 15 minutes You can see some nice wicks pushing back into that channel. Those are, uh, are your telltale signs. Here's a super nice one. Of, what do you call it? A shooting star or doji or whatever that is right there. That was a nice move there. 27057 to 989. Just not a lot of movement going on in there. Uh, and then add your bits on there. You know what? I'm going to go in here at bits. Let's just right click the line there's your slow let's move it down to the next one below and i'm gonna make it a little thinner not as bright and i actually the cyan is up high save as default okay then that yellow is not beating your eyeballs up when you're going in there uh so inside this on a 15 minute we got a nice come down. The candles touch the bottom. You got your nice wicks for the big banks and institutions pushing it back up into the channel. Your cyan crossed over. So at the bottom of the channel to go long, one reason to go long, and it's good. Cyan crosses over the yellow, two reasons to go long. Above the purple point of control dots, three reasons to go long. 
right down here, yellow, yellow, it was green forever, yellow, 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 yellow forever, and then boom, your first green dot, guess what, is the one that goes across, the cyan crosses over, four rays that scale long. Your oscillator never turned red, started getting bigger back up, five reasons go long. That, and same way, guys, like I said before, and gals, that the, this comes down, uh, this could be in your, uh, it's not red, uh, it's not bad, uh, but it is what it is. So we're, we have five yeses and a maybe. Stochastic crosses over on the very next candle, six reasons go long. And your RSI flipped over right here to go along right here. Now, it's not a huge, you know, straight up move. Uh, but, I mean, you've got seven reasons to go wrong and one maybe. That's a good reason to take that trade. And it, it actually worked out really, really nice. It came back, retested the bottom of the channel and the yellow line. And I think that's his custom EMA point of control, something like that. And the thing is, I don't... Um, I don't know what's behind each one of these. I just follow the rules. I mean, and it works. That's the easiest way to put it. But we come back, retest it, came back up again and hit the top of the channel. Now, I can tell you, me, if we touched the top of this channel and this was a, a bits long signal right here, target one, two, three, and four, almost to the tick and the top of the channel, I'm going to move my stop loss up here and take it as close as I can to the top. Now let's click on roller coaster just to see if we had any of those moves were in there. Nope, not on 15 minute, but I guarantee you they are on the smaller ones. And then we didn't cross back over. Now the candle did, came back up, but the cyan line stayed above, retested it again, and then took off again. And look what happened. Wicked out of there, come back. We didn't test the bottom here yet. Now we're gonna probably test the top of that. So that's on 15, drop down to a five. We'll scroll back so the channel will show up. Scroll back up in there and lo and behold, now we do have a ro uh, roller coaster signal possibly up there. I'm gonna be really hesitant because it's so close to the top of that channel line. Let's see what we got out here. So we had a, a nice one there from the center, just a little bit below all the way down outside of the channel. I'm not going to wait for it to stop out up here. You're going to, I move my, when we get to the channel bottom, I move my stop loss to the channel bottom or one tick, you know, below wherever price we're at down there. It's because almost always it's going to turn around and come out. Now it may not always, but more times out of, uh, I'm going to save more taking that one tick there than the little bit more I might've got for it to violate the channel. Uh, then we turned right back around, cyan crossed over above the point of control, yellow, 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 went green, red was, it went two candles in there, but we were going smaller, 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 smaller for five, six candles before, which is 30 minutes, so that's a good sign. Your stochastic crossed over right there, which was one, two, three candles before, 15 minutes before it crossed over. Uh, and then your RSI right here, when it when we touch the bottom channel line, imagine that, look down below at the very bottom where it says 8.4 at 20.35-ish, RSI turn around and go straight up out of there. So you were looking for a reason to go long right there. Now, me personally, I would have taken it when we came back into the channel because we've been respecting it really well. Uh, but if you wanted to be very conservative, you could take it outside of there. And if you really want to be extra conservative, you could take the roller coaster entry up here and take it up to the center channel line. Now, here's a failed roller coaster. It never hit, but it met the requirements for a possible breakout going down. So, you know, I think uh, these can fake you out like this, but all you got to do is look down below and what happened the couple candles before. RSI is pointing straight up in the air almost right there. That you got double stochastics going up. Your oscillator solid green. There's not a drop of red in there. You're going to need some red to get outside of that channel. And everything's freaking green. That one candle right there was yellow. And then we have a sea of green. Not going to happen. Not going to take that.
And then let's see. And then Elliott wave wise, let's go in on the five minute. Let's uh, just so I can get some. I know I don't. Uh, I know I don't. Elliott wave is our best indicator. Uh, I have just gotten so, uh, good enough with my eyes that I can see a fifth wave move. Uh, now on these smaller time frames, I tend to miss them a little bit, but roller coaster usually picks up the third wave. So if I have roller coaster on and like this right here, this looks like to me a one, two, three, four, and a fifth wave move. So let's just isolate off this pivot point right here off the thing. That's candle 20,906. If you look right here, 20,906. So we go up to Elliott wave, click the sprocket, hit inputs. 20,906, click okay. Now I'm going, let's see where we turn off. Looky there, what did I tell you? Uh, I can see it with my own eyes that I don't have to have it on there. Uh, let's take off roller coaster so it's easier to see. And so we did a 20,906 actually had a one the thing on the smaller time frames you're not going to get a large uh now this was a nice move here boom 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 seven to ten candles is the best one two three four five six seven eight nine you couldn't get any better than that i don't like quick little hits uh where it goes up comes down and it's like really really tiny i don't like those like this one here this one actually was a three candle third, fourth, and fifth wave move in three, three five-minute candles. I don't like those. I don't mess with those. This one came up third wave, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, candles down, and then came out. Uh, but let me tell you why I wouldn't take that. Your 6-4 moving average is right here at 26,721. The first target is 738. I mean, it is 17 ticks at five bucks a piece. Uh, not bad, but there's too much risk in there for me. That Because your channel, you know what I mean? Like you're trying to get here and the channel top is right above it. There's, If you hear Paul say or other people say there's not enough fresh air above, it, like you want to see something you can climb. Like uh, for instance, this one right here, there's fresh air above here because we can climb to the top of the channel because we're at the bottom of the channel. Over here, we're already almost at the top. So the chances of us busting out of this and going wherever is not as high. So you've got a one and a two. This was a three right here, but because it kept going, the three moves after you hit your fifth wave target, the fifth wave turns into a three. So this was a three and one of the rules is we draw a channel on the third to the fourth wave pullback. So let's go over here to where is my fourth wave pullback channel. You go to the top of that candle. You pull it down. The lowest point was this red candle. You can see right there. Drop that channel down. Okay. You do not want to go long until you are outside of that channel. And look how good it was. It came down and retested it and took off out of there. Uh, so you want to be outside the channel. We were outside the channel on this candle. One reason to go long. You want to be above the blue 6-4 moving average, those lines right there. We went above it right there. Two reasons to go long. Now the next candle did come down, 2756. Went three ticks down, so well within your stop loss range. Uh, but it and that's kind of in a way a little more confirmation because it tested the outside of the channel and then quickly moved back, uh, which is good. But so we're above six four moving average outside of the candle. We didn't violate the Elliott wave. Uh, green, amber, and red. So it's a 75% chance because we pulled down into the red that this was going to be successful. There's three reasons to go long. Now, on the fourth wave pivot, this is great down here that it was yellow. Uh, 
we because we were a sea of green going long even though it was pulling back in there um, four reasons to go long now your oscillator never crowned now you'll hear me say I do not like taking a trade if it does not crown that on a fifth wave move. I just don't, I tend to get uh, hammered on those. We go to Fib retracement and 91.40. And you'll go to the wave four, you go to zero and then go back up to the high of wave three. And I'm, I typically move this just a little bit to line it up straight. We didn't crown, so there's nothing to see there. Uh, so five reasons to go long. We didn't violate the 140. Bella, be quiet. 140, um, and then you've got your stochastic crossed over a couple candles before, and actually that one that came out, it crossed over again. Six reasons to go long, and then your RSI clicked up over here. Seven reasons to go long, uh, and then if you had your bits on. I assure you, cyan crossover, eight reasons to go long. So and above the point of control, nine reasons to go long. Zero reasons not to take this trade, nine reasons to take it. If you grade a trade like this every single time, you will, I think you will make less mistakes. You will take better quality trades. If you don't have five reasons to take a trade, don't freaking take it just because like, oh, well, it probably should, you know, it probably should work. Uh, and then here, look, look at this one. This is a failed, uh, failed one right here. Let's do the failed one. So that wave five, which we hit the target, went sideways and then continued on. So it became a longer three and another wave four pullback. So let's do another channel from the wave three to the wave four, all right? And then, so the reasons to go long out of this thing is you need to be, we didn't violate the green, yellow, and red. That's a good reason. We were outside the channel. There's two reasons to go long. But cyan actually crossed over right here. There's three reasons to go long. But we weren't outside of the 6-4 moving average until above this next candle right here. All right, so you're not going to take any of these in here. Now, Probably could have 28,860. I mean, you got 25 ticks in there at what is it now? Five bucks a piece. So I mean, it's a quick hundred bucks. Uh, I wouldn't have taken that um, out of there until we got outside of this. Um, your oscillator was good. It was going up. Your stochastic crossed over. You got five, six, seven. Uh, you, th this was, you had six, seven reasons to go long and really none to not take it, but it failed. That's just the way that it is. You know what I mean? You're, uh, there's no indicator. There's no, you know, the markets, we're not going to pick every single uh, trade perfectly. But this one, if you did take it, and it took off, as soon as it goes, it, my trades, when they are five ticks positive, I move my stop loss to one tick profit. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and it stops me out. Now, sometimes do I get screwed, and it comes down, touches it, and then races off to where I was at, and I'm like, damn, because I can't get in it fast enough, and it shoots three points up. Now the train has already left the station, and you can't – you know what I mean? You're going to jump onto the tracks. Uh, and then it, the train may come back and run you over uh, and stop you out again. So uh, my thing is, is if I do that one tick profit uh, after it's five, eight ticks positive, if I get a runner and it takes off, great. If I don't and it quickly comes back and hits me, I don't get hit with an eight to 10, 12 tick stop loss that stops me out instantly and now I'm $125 in the hole. Now I got $12.50 profit minus $4 or so in fee. I'm $8 ahead and I don't have a loser. So even if I, if that happens to me three times, I'm $24 ahead with zero loss. So then when I do hit one that takes off, it goes good. Yes. Uh, Edith, I, 
uh, regardless of roller coaster, um, like for instance, there's no, well, let me turn on roller coaster, see if it's on here. No, this had a, a roller coaster move down, not the other way. Let's turn off Elliott Wave. I, 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 uh, I have been making more of my decisions in the last month, two months, uh, with just this right here, a channel and bits. And then this stuff down here, grading a trade that I don't even pay attention to the Elliott wave. It's great when there's a fifth wave move, but I can, like I said, I can look in the chart and I can look at it and say, here's a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. My eyes are trained for it, so I don't need to have all that color on my screen uh, to figure it out. Uh, and I also know when we come outside of a move like this, it, because it's an uptrend, so you're not taking a trade against trend, even though this one was a nice short trade from one side. This was one side of the channel to the other. This was one side of the channel to the center, back to the bottom, and then all the way to the top. That taking those, if it's an uptrend, you increase your odds only taking a long. All right. Now, I don't think your odds are bad when you have a nice big wick like that pulling back in. And this is a five minute chart and it has a candle that big. I'm going to say, if we go to the 15 minute, let's see. There. Click this right here. Yeah, I mean, look how big that wick is there. Yep, even on a 15 minute, five minute was actually that there was a lot of action on that channel in that five minutes, like a lot to make a wick that big for one candle. That's a lot of, lot of movement going along in there. Going that same way with down here, that's one five minute candle. So we wicked out quickly and came back. Um, and that, if you read that price action breakdown book, there's your entry. This right here on a five minute candle, this, I don't even need to see another indicator of what's going on. Like if you look, look at this move right here, pulling back in here, when this wicked all the way down, this is a five minute candle. Uh, it goes all the way out and coming back. Now, if you look below down here, you have indecision. We're turning red. Stochastic had crossed over two candles before. RSI is pointing down. So everything in this, everything told you do not take a long. Like this was still going short. But that wick was telling you there was a movement change. Now we did come back, uh, it didn't, you still it never even touched your entry point if you got in at the channel. Uh, even if you waited till the candle closed and the next one opened, it still didn't touch it. Came up, boom, boom, and took off. When you see big long wicks like that, start looking really fast because there's something going on on those. Well, your 15 minute move. That candle ripped up, went to one, two, three, uh, went to fourth, fourth target, guys. So bits, bits did well on their 27.092 to 165. Not a bad, uh, not a bad little move. That's a few hundred bucks on there. Uh, Mark, no, uh, uh, Paul and I are talking right now um, on – it's something we're going to discuss. It's not uh, set in stone, so don't hold my feet to the fire on it. That I think what we're going to do is put the support and resistance zones only for people that are uh, – anybody that has bought an indicator from us that will still load those on the Trade the Fifth website, but they'll only be accessible to people that have – uh, bought an indicator or subscribing to an indicator, uh, whichever one, doesn't matter what it is, that it'd be available. That's uh, my suggestion on it. It The amount of time, and guys, let me tell you on the 5K Club, uh, the whole point of that was basically like what I'm doing tonight, to go through over and over and over to show people uh, the rules of doing it. 
it's hard for Paul being in Spain because the time difference, uh, he has to do them around 8.30, uh, you know, 7.30 uh, Central Time, 8.30 Eastern. A lot of people are at work. So turnout for the videos was not, now we had a lot of people that watched them after the fact, uh, but actual turnout for the videos, would, there wasn't a lot of people showing up for it. Um, to, and it, there's a, I mean, it's a lot of time to put on, um, you know what I mean? It's, it sounds like it's no big deal. It's only an hour, but then we have to take it, put the video together and put it on the YouTube. Then you got to have the other guy load it to the website, make sure that the SEO stuff's on it. And it's a lot of stuff uh, on there. And we just didn't get enough uh, people showing up for the, now there's a lot of people that download the support and resistance zones, like a lot uh, probably three times as many, uh, that show up to the trainings, but that's the whole point of the 5k club is to have the live trainings and nobody was showing up to them. So, uh, what's the difference if you watch the video after the fact, I can shoot a video like this and you can watch it after the fact and it's the same thing. All right, Mark. Awesome. All right, guys, it's 8.04. Any last minute questions? I'll answer anything you got. I need to go take a shower and wash all the sand off. <laughs> Every time I touch my arms, I can feel sand all up them. All right, Jay, thank you guys. Um, hey, I appreciate you all coming and spending an hour with me. Um, I try to throw in a little bit uh, each time. Um, you know, a little something different, but I, I am pretty repetitious and I do the repetitious on uh, on purpose. So, all right. See you guys. Have a good night.